new, 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 new. All right, first up, we got some revisions. Okay, it's been a revision party. So um, a lot of our TFT displays have been revised. Uh, as we ran out of uh, previous versions, I decided to respin them. So this is like an old classic, the 1.8 inch TFT. It's also respin by the quarter and you, the super nice fonts. Super nice fonts, thanks to Penguin. Uh, sometimes we have done slight tweaks, like for example, I think on this design, I added some pull-up resistors on the reset CS pin lines. I turned some 0805 components to 0603 and some SOICs turned into T-soft. The most important thing is on the bottom is that iSpy connector. And that's, you know, a lot of people um, like that we've redone all, all of our sensors with STEM IQT port to make plug and play I squared C. But what about SPI? I mean, like, especially wiring displays, often the display is not right next to the dev board. You want it panel mounted, and then like you have all these wires hanging off of it. Well, the iSpy connector is designed to make that easy. It's a standardized flex connector with SPI and power and backlight and, you know, touch interface control and IRQ, all the pins that you expect that you would want for a display um, or e-ink or OLED or whatever, all on a flex cable um, to make it very easy for you to be able to have the display. Um, far away, we have 200 millimeter cables. They work fine. I mean, you're going to have to experiment with speed versus cable distance. Um, but it solves a problem of like, I want to have a display and I don't want to have long, you know, one inch stranded cables and they just come loose. So the 1.8 inch display, it's otherwise the same shape, size, code, everything. Um, we've just added this connector, so that should make it much easier for people to interface with. Next rev. Other rev is the 1.3 inch uh, TFT display. This also got updated. Also, if you notice the little graphics on there, that's Phil B's new graphics demo yes. that he wrote for GFX. Uh, a nice little test uh, demo that does, you know, um, all the shapes and fonts and stuff. So this is the 1.3 inch display. Uh, we had the yeah. 1.5 inch a couple weeks ago. This is uh, the also the TFT display. And then finally is the OLED display, yeah. which is okay. this one. So yeah. they all look very similar. No, this yes. is the one point, yeah, 1 1.3, 1 1.3, next one. Keep going. OLED. So the 1.5 inch 128 by 120 RGB OLED yeah. also got the iSpy treatment. Um, it now has a easy connector that you can uh, plug into. Obviously it doesn't have a backlight, but all the other pins do stuff and um, you can easily wire it up. Especially for people who want to make little um, eyes. People like to use the OLED for mask yeah. projects. Remember, uh, they would use uh, the Philby uh, Monster Mask eye code. Um, and so now you can use, you can wire them up a lot easier without, I mean, you can use breadboarding, but you can use a cable instead for um, distance OLED. And then it's got the old demo and this is, this one's a nice fancy demo. Oh, look at oh, this. Graphics, text, buffering. Buttery smooth. Buttery smooth graphics. So that's the updated OLED. So it's the same size, shape, everything. Um, a couple small little tweaks. It's now black instead of blue, but I wanted to show the original as well in case people were like, hey, what's the original? All right, next up. Next up, um, I love joysticks. This is a uh, dual potentiometer joystick and it has a button in the center. This is not the joystick in a Nintendo Switch, but it's basically this looks and feels the same, it's the same uh. size. But instead of using a magnetic encoder, which is really hard to interface with, and I don't think it's open sourced or whatever, um, this one just has simple two millimeter pitch connector. So it's much, much easier to use in a project. It's not breadboard friendly, but you could make a custom PCB or you could kind of bend the pins back and forth and maybe sort of make it kind of fit in a board. And here you can see it's got uh, dual pots. Like, you know, dual pots are not going to last as long as a magnetic connector, uh, sorry, magnetic sensor, which is why it's not used in the Nintendo Switch. But if you like the feeling of that joystick, that kind of flicky center button pressy, um, joystick. This is an inexpensive way to add that kind of uh, connector to your project or interface. Okay, next up. We next got up. Rails of Chips. It's time for the real world. Yeah. Uh, this is the <laughs> RP2040 edition. So we've got uh, lots of RP2040s, you know, during the um, chip shortage, this was always available. And people have asked us, hey, you know, there's, we want to get chips from you and you sell them in sets of one and 10, but we need 
yeah. more than that. And I was like, oh, yeah. We want this many. Well, we do have reels, and they're a good deal because we have a couple extra reels. Uh, you can get them, the chips, for like 74 cents a piece. If you buy um, a reel of 3400 or uh, 75 cents a piece, if you get them in packs of 100. If you get them in packs of 100, they come in a cut tape strip. If you get a reel, it comes in a reel. This is a cut tape strip, which yeah. will, um, you know, you'll have to load it into your pick and play so you can peel the, the strip off, but it, it's they're protected in a covered uh, tape piece. So both versions, we also, of course, have them in singles and in packs of 10, but yeah. if you're making a lot of boards, which we are, uh, you might want to get them in packs of 100 or 3,400. Yeah. So Next up. Next up from Scout Mix, we have a uh, TDA chip FM um, transmitter. So this is, sorry, is it a transmitter or receiver? This is a receiver. I think. Uh, yeah, it's FM radio. So this is, you can listen to FM um, stations and uh, after you solder in a piece of wire as an antenna, you plug in your headphones um, and it's a, it got digital I2C control so you can scan for stations. You can like scan to the next station that has good FM signal. Um, you can uh, have volume up and down. It's kind of like a very low cost, simple FM chip. Um, but it's on a STEMIQT port connector here for easy use. And uh, Scout Mix even, even wrote a CircuitPython library to use it with. So if you want to wow. kind of make your own little digital radio FM receiver, um, especially one that's all ready to go, plug and play, no soldering required, uh, the TDA is, is a pretty popular one and it works well. You can make your own radio with CircuitPython. So cool. Yes. You can do it. Listen to free music. Yeah. You don't have to pay Spotify. There's music <laughs> all around you. All right. So the stars of the show, we have two things. Mm. Um, and I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. Um, are you ready to do it? Yeah. Um, I think those are the RP2040. This so. is RP2040 stuff. So. One more. Yeah. Oh, these are the RP2040 things. But the uh, star of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, is... Okay. We've got two. And the first one is the IoT BFF. So this is, I've been creating a lot of little add-on boards for STEMA QT or, sorry, it's for QT Pi or Shao boards. Uh, you know, we got the ESP32 and S2, S3 and C3 and um, SAMD21, RP2040. And then from C, they've got the Shao with NRF and SAMD and some other chips. Um, and they're adorable little boards. And one of the things we thought would be fun is to make little IoT button projects. Like you just press a button and something happens on you know, some IoT service or whatever. It's a very simple uh, interface. You just press a button and we wanted a nice big button. So this yes. IoT BFF, it's very simple. It's a very low cost board. All it does is give you a really big button and a NeoPixel because, uh, you know, it's yeah. you want to flip over so you couldn't see the NeoPixel on the other side. Um, and when you press the button, you know, it just uh, shorts uh, eight, pin A2 low. And then the NeoPixel is on in the GPIOs, so I can I can just show really quickly a little demo. Let's see if I can get this demo running. Live demo. Yeah. Uh -oh. well, somebody film me go that way, or we can just we have nice pictures. We do have nice pictures, but I don't know why this is not longer working. Well, I've been unplugging and plugging things. Around I think we may have ball. unplugged. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh well. Probably a fun something. Okay. We'll show, maybe we'll show a demo later. We'll do okay. a separate video. And once again, our show besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, our community, everybody who helps Adafruit go is. All right. Next up is the SHT45. This was by uh, customer request. We've stuck the SHT40 for a bit, which is a um, fairly good quality, like 1.8 or 2% uh, percent relative humidity uh, precise sensor. This is the SHG45, which is the same code interface as the SHG40. So if you've got firmware um, or driver for the SHG40, the 45 is the same, but it's much uh, higher quality. So these are the ones that pass like the much better sensor test. They are 1% uh, humidity and 0.1, uh, 1 .1 degrees um, centigrade accurate humidity and temperature sensors. Uh, they're very simple. They only have you know I squared C interface, um, but we've got Arduino and CircuitPython code. You can't change the I squared C interface uh, address or only 
OX44. It's the only thing that comes in. If you need to connect multiple of these, you could use our I squared C multiplexer. We have uh, the PCA9548 and PCA9546 is in the store, so you could plug and play those if you need to have a bunch of them. Um, but they're a little more expensive because they're higher quality. But if you really want, like, this is really one of the most accurate and precise uh, temperature and humidity sensors uh, that we've got. And our PCB has a nice little cutout, uh, so there's a little bit of thermal isolation. Um, they're a really wonderful sensor, and uh, we do have whippersnapper support as well for the SHT4X series. So again, plug and play, no code required uh, to make an IoT project with this sensor. Or, you know, use your existing Arduino or CircuitPython code. Um, to add this very lovely sensor to your temperature and humidity monitoring or logging. Mr. Burns.